I guess I always felt like I was going to be an artist. And then when I went to art school uh, in 99, that was sort of, I think, what solidified that decision. Coming out of art school, you know, there's still a lot of questions to ask. And um, having some exhibits promptly out of school and uh, I guess during school, you know, I felt like there was an audience with my work. So that was probably a huge help. You know, I'm becoming an artist and reflecting about my life and my experiences in the world through my work. Exploring how to convey that brought me not only to a fine art school, but it also brought me to a school where I studied animation and visual effects and learned how to make short films. So after that, I was exhibiting short films and creating paintings in my 20s and then eventually um, started to merge the two, which is kind of what you see in my work today. It's sort of a compilation of painting, animation, nods to cartoons, nods to composing for film, storytelling, and also creating short films. It's really organic for me, and even to the point where there was this large canvas that I had spent a lot of time on, and but maybe like a third of the way into the journey, I would say, I decided to scrap the canvas and made a short film, Mom Away, uh, which is exhibiting here at this, ex at this museum. When I create, I guess I, uh, I generally create intuitively, trying to work to tell the story that I partially have in mind during the process, right? And it kind of fleshes itself out during the, the painting process. Those nods to Ojibwe heritage often come when I'm asking myself a question like, how do I represent this image? And often how you would see a painter or a sculptor like Michelangelo pull from the Bible stories you know, I pull from Ojibwe stories and Ojibwe iconography and try to put it in a light that makes sense here in, the, in our current century. The intensity of color, I think, is something that maybe just came to me through trying to figure out what excites me as a painter. And uh, I think early on I was working with um, vivid colors and I think that comes from watching muralists work, which I don't consider myself a muralist, but I'm a big fan. When I watch muralist work and I see what they create, and oftentimes they're using colors that make a, an environment come to life. So that might be one source of that. And I remember early on looking at these really muted paintings and uh, finding the value in them, and then looking at more contemporary art with like this super hot color scheme and really just feeling an emotional connection to that. Like it sort of pushed me around a little bit, right? And steered me in how I interpreted the painting. And in figuring out where I stood in all of that, I remember uh, hearing a story about when they removed a bunch of candle wax and stuff like that from Michelangelo's uh, mural. The Sistine Chapel. <clears throat> And everybody was so shocked to see that Michelangelo was actually a colorist. So I thought that was uh, really um, something that pushed me in the direction of using more vivid palettes. It's a matter of where I'm at and what I'm seeing in the world. And I try to always interpret what we're all going through, but through my lens and through my voice, through what imagery I have authorship over, based on my experience. And a lot of times, if it's something that I want to speak on from a cultural perspective, just through uh, my own ethics or I guess where I stand in this world, I'll fall back on that Ojibwe iconography, but I don't always uh, do that because sometimes I like to reference cartoons that I watched growing up. 
cartoons that are being made now, video games, uh, you know, what our younger generation is looking at, just trying to stay in touch with them. And um, I guess in, in doing so, try and be a good steward, you know, of like what's happening as we all move forward as a society. So I think from a utility perspective in painting, um, using that kind of pop imagery or that those popular icons is a good way to identify with my audience, you know, when I'm telling my story. Because when they see something that they identify with in there, they're more apt to have a conversation about what that piece means to them and why, you know, like I'm saying what I'm saying or what they're hearing, why they're hearing what they're hearing. And I think from a simplistic standpoint, just like a, my human experience, it just excites me to paint with that material. I do have recurring characters and sometimes they don't always look the same, but they represent the same thing. The Supernaut is a kind of like a space baby uh, cherub uh, alien on this planet sort of character. And I reference that character when I think I'm trying to reference like what we're all doing on this planet, you know, or like what somebody might sort of see if they came to see what we were up to on this planet. And that character, it started out as um, sort of the shape-shifting, you could call it just like an entity or, uh, you know, like a spirit or something like that. Kind of part rabbit with all of these ears and, you know, sort of like bandaged identity instead of having an actual face. And then I... Uh, move towards the uh, space baby uh, kind of thing as my son started to uh, draw close to getting to this to this world and that sort of became the identity you know what I was thinking because I was just forward thinking about you know the future and stuff like that and I think that's where it's probably at now. I think masks started early on when uh, I was fresh out of college and I started working on pieces about identity and evolving identity, changing identity, um, the identities that we're given, the identities that we take on, and our true self, whatever that means, right? Um, and through time, the mask has been one of the elements in my work that has sort of endured, you know, because I can move it, I can change it, I can push it, you know, into the dark or into the light, depending on what the painting is about. More recently, I guess in the last, you know, two or three years, it can be tied into um, how we respond to each other during times of uncertainty. You know, how, how do we show our true colors and stuff like that. So the mask is ever evolving, you know, it's ever fluid. Um, there aren't masks in Ojibwe heritage as far as I know, but uh, I've always been a fan of Central American artistry. So maybe that's kind of where I picked up some of that influence and uh, just sort of appropriated it to what I need, you know, in my work. So the bicycle paintings, uh, I believe, are about riding in tandem. And it started out as uh, I made a pencil drawing for this uh, proposal that I was creating for a public mural, which didn't go through, by the way. Uh, it was The mural was given to somebody else. But I took those drawings and um, turned them into paintings nonetheless because I think in our human experience it's often evident how we uh, teach our young and uh, the outcome of how our young responds to us is often very clear so being that most of my paintings are about how we interact with each other or our how our characters on screen feed each other, so to speak. 
I thought those paintings would be, uh, the tandem bicycle was a nice way to convey that. And I'm a big fan of riding my bike up the shore of Lake Superior. Uh, haven't got to do it much this year, but um, there's still some time left in the season. So uh, the bicycle was kind of like a nice little personal piece for me. I'd like audiences to just uh, have a conversation, you know, about the piece and spend time with it. You know, think about it. Like, what does the story say to them? And I think what they take from it is sometimes more interesting than my leaping point. I think uh, if they know a little bit about me, they might know where I'm coming from. Um, and it's always, uh, it's always a vignette, it's always a story, or like a snapshot of a story, you know, where characters are having a scene together. And the exhibit is beautiful. I, I, uh, I appreciate the curation and the way that it was, it was put up. It always makes me feel good as, as, a, as an artist to come into a space and see, you know, the work handled with care and put together really well.